Okay, what's up guys, Truman here, welcome back to another video. So, uh, the guys who are here for MGTOW and NoFap, you can take your faces away from your palms and just listen for just a second. I know you guys are probably thinking, what the hell are you doing? But I did it, I did it. I went on Tinder for a month, um, around about on February. I'm kind of ashamed to talk about this, but I need to get it off my chest. Um, I was actually doing a NoFap hard mode. Hard mode is basically, I was not actually looking at any sort of um, explicit images or anything else. And around about that time, I got so desperate, I actually signed up for Tinder. Like, it was that bad. <laughs> it was that bad, I actually signed up for Tinder. Uh, because, I, well, one, I just wanted to see what it was like, and just to see what sort of matches I can get. Because I wasn't actually going it to actually find an actual relationship. I was just going in, um, into it because, one, no fat pad one, and two, curiosity. And wow, it was a really interesting experience. I do not think I actually want to do it again. I, I... Do not, no, not not want to. I am going to stay far, far away from that for reasons why I'm actually, I'm actually going to get into. So, I made a profile, I found some pictures that I thought were nice, and I uploaded it. And I started up. Could not think of an actual title to do. I really, really suck at descriptions. I really, really hate, like, describing myself, because based on my personality, I'm not the kind of guy who likes to sort of... I'm, I'm just more natural, you know? I don't like summing myself up. But, being, being someone who uh, likes to be kind of concise, I basically decided, you know what, let me try and use my imagination to, you know, go against my instincts and try and think of one. So I sat down one day and probably crapped out one of the best taglines I've ever seen. It is kind of the thing that you hope, that sort of a comedian tells and you hope, is that a joke because that's just so goddamn cringy. Oh god. I know, you can face spam again, it's absolutely fine. It was probably the biggest moment of genius that I've ever had, and it really just, just, just goes to show that I should have listened to my instincts. I am not the kind of guy that can basically sit down and just sum, and just sum himself up. Uh, just like I'm not, I'm not the kind of guy who you can just point at and say, although I do know how to talk to women, you can't just point me at a woman and say, okay, now chat her up. I'm not that kind of guy, literally. I, it's, it's sort of a natural thing. I'd rather just start up a conversation and then move into it. But if I try and actually be like, okay, let's now try and be attractive, I end up being like the beast from Beauty and the Beast just without the charm and with all the hair. So, after that moment of absolute genius, I decided to realize, well, after realizing that I was an absolute social and texting retard, um, again, uh, I basically decided to uh, do some investigation, and uh, Tinder has a function, obviously, whereby you can either choose to see men or women, or you can choose to see both. Now, obviously, I was choosing to see women, uh, so and because of that, I couldn't actually see the men, and I wanted to see what other men's descriptions were. So, I switched over my uh, profile to only see men, and... Uh, that was when I got my first matchup. I crap you not, the matchup happened within five minutes. Within five minutes of me looking at men's profiles, I had a matchup. Now, this kind of shocked me because I actually had my Tinder profile open for at least a few hours. Now, I didn't know anything about Tinder back then, so I didn't know how many, how, how, um, how long it takes. And within five minutes, I got a guy. Within five minutes. And literally, I thought to myself, hey, this is weird. And it kept happening. Within about 30 minutes, I had three guys. Three guys! And it kind of freaked me out. It was kind of one of those moments where I was like, ha <laughs> switch back, switch back, switch back. I was just like, what the hell? Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not a homophobe, but it was kind of like, this is kind of weird. Like, I'm getting loads of guys look, um, uh, looking at my profile, and heaven forbid actually one of them knows me. So, I immediately just switched back as fast as I could, and just decided to just wipe the whole thing and just basically start off with with a complete clean slate, you know, just complete, you know, uh, tabula rasa. And it actually worked. Uh, I found out that actually it's a lot easier to not actually post um, a lot of information ab um, about yourself on there. So I left my profile running with that with having absolutely no description. And I woke up the next day to found that I had two matches. Now it was kind of exciting. I was like, oh wow, someone actually, so someone is interested. And I immediately was like, oh my god, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not attracted. And um, it sort of struck me. Um, I didn't actually realize it at the time, but just seeing someone who was actually matched and seeing how I just wasn't attracted, and I read through the description and stuff, I realized that like there was something really, really wrong with it. It was like shopping. It was like going through one person and saying, you're not attractive, you're not attractive, you're not attractive. Oh, she's all right. You're not attractive, you're not attractive. And just going through the whole thing, it just seemed really just frivolous and just really, really empty because... 
If I don't like someone who's attractive, I don't go around looking at people who I don't find attractive and say, you're not attractive, you're not attractive, you're not attractive. But it was like, when I was using it, I was just engaging my brain in that sort of activity. And it just really, really seemed odd to me. That and I also realized that me as a person, after actually going through it, I live such an extreme life and I have such extreme tastes that most of the profiles that I was seeing were likes pizza, likes booze, likes partying, likes this, likes that, likes, likes, likes whatever. And I was really and thinking, huh, I don't actually like any of those things. So actually going up and meeting up and saying, oh, hey, do you want to meet up at the restaurant? Uh, kind of no, because I don't drink anything but water. Uh, would you like some water? Have you gone on a date and just drink Evian like the whole time? Like, no. I'm like, hey, yeah, let's go out partying. I'm just be sober the whole time, which is absolutely fine, by the way. But reading like literally like 60, 70% of the actual Tinder profiles I was reading was like, as a party animal or like alcohol, like this and like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But me as I am right now, I'm currently doing a lot of fasts and cleanses. And it's like, so yeah, do you want to go out to a vegan bar and get like a juice? I'm like, <laughs> no. Tinder for me is literally the worst thing that I could be doing because like I said, I'm more of a natural, spontaneous person. So going through the whole thing, it's kind of just weird just seeing how it's kind of weird to like finding out how how can I connect with this person. I'd rather just go out and find them like in a natural natural environment and actually go out the, go go out to those places. I actually realized really really early on that if a girl is really hot like t a ten or whatever. And I know there are, there are some women that don't like me rating women, but get over it because women rate men all the time. I basically thought to myself, oh, I, I'll, I'll like that, I'll like that. So I basically started using and started liking the women that I liked. And I realized very quickly that literally like one of them out of like 50 that I actually liked actually got back to me. And I thought to myself, this is kind of interesting because obviously like, you know, you matched and you like it, so why aren't you talking to me? And back then uh, I didn't actually realize that like just because, uh, j just because someone likes you doesn't mean they're actually going to talk to you. So after swiping for a while and seeing loads of hot people, I realized that you know what, this is a complete and total waste of time because the women that I actually are actually willing to talk back to me, I'm not actually attracted to. And the women that I do actually, uh, who I do actually find attractive aren't actually messaging me back. And I thought to myself, you know what, this is a total and complete waste of time. Why don't I just, you know, go out, find a woman, you know, go out in a more natural environment, you know, going out to places that I actually enjoy, or, you know, going to meetups and just doing it spontaneously. Because this whole mechanical thing, and then having people not text you back, and then just, you know, going through the whole superficial thing about it, and then waking up and thinking, oh, I've got a match. It triggered a whole lot of, a whole lot of alarm bells in me that um, I've really totally forgotten about. Like, throughout, for example, throughout the whole NoFab journey, I've just realized just how much my brain uh, is totally wired to getting these little fixtures from seeing women. And also, I also realized that because I'm trying to do no fap on hardcore mode, I'm trying to detoxify from all of this, just seeing women and rating them and doing all this other stuff. It was basically activating the exact same pathways in my brain that porn does. So whenever you look at an image, you get that same dopamine hit, and then you get another dopamine hit, and another, and another, and another dopamine hit. So it was making it just a lot harder for me to just sort of get over it. And after just, you know, about probably about two weeks of it, I thought to myself, this is a total waste of money. Uh, so I just canceled my subscription, deleted my account, and that was the end of it. I never want to go on it again. I actually did a lot of research into actual Tinder, and I was horrified. Like, I was absolutely shocked. I had no idea just how bad these social dating apps are. Uh, like, for example, just how biased these things are against men. So I'm going to pull up a study here that basically is by the Elite Daily. It's a site that basically talks about stuff. I actually need to look at the site. Um, they basically uh, did a little social experiment with um, with um, Tinder. And they basically uh, took two Tinder profiles, gave them fake names, gave them uh, I, uh, identical age, number, photos, and discovery settings. And I assumed that they're actually attractive, which I think both of them relatively are. Maybe the dog photo isn't. But basically, the guy accumulated 269 matches and there were 28 messages in his inbox. And this is someone who has swiped a thousand times. The woman, uh, Brianna here, basically got 701 matches with 748 messages waiting for her for a reply. That 70% match rate and a 45% message rate, or is a 27% match rate and a 10.5% match rate. Now, this is only one study. But it basically shows that the game is really rigged against men. This has been replicated a few other times with the results basically showing the same thing again and again and again. That women always get more matches than men. And this is just a fact of nature because like it or not, women are selectors and men are, and men are more likely to be choosers. Now I know you can go into the whole alpha and beta stuff but the bottom line is, is that the man goes out to find the girl and the woman selects. Now obviously this has changed a lot with clubbing and how basically if you are a strong enough man, the women will basically come to you. Biologically and evolutionally speaking, men are more likely to go with more women whereas women are more likely to pick and choose the men, the cream on the top. There's probably about 70% of men are just not being seen. Whereas the top 30% cream, all the women are looking for that. 
So unless you've won the uh, genetic lottery and you have a good profile picture and, and you spend time swiping right, which I didn't do, I probably swiped a few times, you are not going to get in. You are going to get like one match and you're probably not going to like it. So it's a total waste of time if you're a man. I found out uh, just after talking to just a lot of people and their sort of experiences that women tend to use Tinder as a backup plan. So a woman will be messaging multiple men on Tinder, whereas that man will be lucky to get one or two, unless they're very good. Don't get me wrong, Tinder is very good if you know how to use it. But most men are probably going to have about one or two people. But most men are probably going to have, you know, just a few people here and there. They're not really going to have, you know, as many matches as women. So it is literally an uphill uh, curve for men, which is why I really don't recommend, unless you're gay, by the way. <laughs> if you're gay, if you're a man and you're gay and you want to hook up, Tinder is the thing for you. And just to pull that up, I'm going to pull up a study uh, from The Guardian. It's a UK newspaper that basically shows that 42% of people using a dating app on Tinder already have a partner. This actually blew my mind. Women basically use this as a backup plan, and men as well, whereby they can be in a, um, in a relationship, and if it falls apart, they've already got like 10 guys basically looking for them. So yeah, like, like it says here, it really shows that 30% of users who, who use Tinder are married, and while well, another 12% are in a relationship. 54% class themselves as single, whereas the last 3% consider themselves divorced or widowed. So 54% of singles who use, whether or not they're actually dating or they've just started or, or they're just, you know, uh, you know, trying, you know, testing the water, so to speak, they're still using Tinder. And it's like, it makes so much sense because if you are actually an attractive woman, why would you settle with one? And Tinder gives you that ability to basically say like, here you go, here's a here's hundred guys, pick and choose what you want. And it's, and you know, plus it plays on the uh, negative psychological or the actual just psychological traits of women, whereby it's like, there's that whole vanity sink. And this is true for men as well, it's not just women. But there's that whole vanity sink whereby you log on to Tinder and you see how many men how, um, how many men like you and you just basically get this constant dopamine, this constant self-gratification fix, which is absolutely prevalent in especially today's generation, uh, whereby kids are so obsessed with their smartphones and self-esteem and who likes me and stuff like that. But after doing all this research, I basically realized Tinder is not the thing for me and if you're a guy who is really looking for the right partner, there are loads of love stories on Tinder, don't get me wrong, but you're better off just going out, just improving yourself, hitting the gym, improving your diet, you know, just dealing dealing with your own issues and then going out and finding a girl or just going out and finding a girl anyway. Um, even though you have to deal with rejection, which is one big thing. And something that really Tinder, well, the reason why Tinder is so popular is because it really does break that sort of barrier of actually having to go up and walk and actually meet them. You don't have to approach them when they're surrounded by all their friends and stuff. So it seems really tempting, but quite honestly, my personal advice is stay the hell away from it, unless you're gay. Uh, so yeah, that's it for me. Uh, Freeman out. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace.